Hi, so these quick tests are really like cut down GCSEs by grade. So it's worthwhile having a go at them. If you're aiming for a grade four or a grade five or a grade six, then they're all on three minute maths and also on the YouTube channel as well. Please let me know how you get on in the comments. I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so in this particular video, we're going to be looking at roughly about grade five GCSE questions. Um, please do visit 3minutemaths.co.uk and there are other options there for you if you wanted to have a look at them. So for Amanda, Bryce and Cass, we're looking at a ratio question. So we've got Amanda, Bryce and Cass and they're saving in the ratio three to four to nine, which basically means the difference between uh, the amount Cass saves and the amount Bryce saves is going to be five pounds. OK, now, according to the question, it's not five pounds. It's actually one hundred and fifty pounds, which is therefore going to be. 30 times more. So what we need to do is multiply everything by 30, which actually means then that Cass saves £270, Bryce saves £120, and Amanda saves £90. So therefore, we can show that Amanda saves £90 for part A of that particular question. And then it says show that the total amount of money saved is actually £480. So all we need to do with that is just add all of those together. So we're going to get 90 plus 120 plus 270 and that's going to equal £480, which is part B of that particular question. OK, hopefully that's been useful to you. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions and compare your own solutions. OK, so question two, it says write these numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. OK, this is a little bit of a tricky one. The way I would do it is I would look at the index, the smallest index, which in this particular case is this one here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert all of the numbers to multiplication by 10 to the power of 4. So the first one, rather than 4 times 10 to the 8, I've actually moved my decimal point a further 4 four places and that's 10 to the 4. The second one I'm going to move it a further two places so that's going to become 10 to the 4. The third one I'm going to move it a further six places so that's actually going to become 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, uh, so that's going to be six places in total times 10 to the 4. And then the final one is actually 4400 zero, zero times 10 to the 4. So, OK, with that now, hopefully I can see that my smallest number is this one here, which is 4200. My next biggest is going to be this one, which is 4,400. And then I've got 40,000. And then finally, I've got 44,000. Now, with these types of questions, what they ask you to do is to go back to the original question, put it in the format of 42 times 10 to the 6, which is the smallest number. 4400 zero, zero times 10 to the 4, which is the next biggest. 4 times 10 to the 8, which is the third biggest. And then 0 0.044 times 10 to the 10, which is the largest of those four numbers. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. There are some additional standard form questions on 3 Minute Maths. Please do visit and have a look at those. Let's look then at an index question, which is going to be question number three. So with these, each of the terms inside the brackets, I need to cube. So therefore, I've got two cubed, which is going to be eight. And then I've got a to the three cubed, which is going to be a to the power of nine. And then I've got b squared cubed, and that's going to be b to the power of six, because what we do is we multiply the indices. OK, hopefully that one's OK for you, and that's two marks on that particular question. Let's have a look at finding the gradient of line L. OK, so to find the gradient, what we do is we look at the difference. The common way of doing this is y2 minus 1. So it's the difference in y divided by the difference in x, which is x2 minus x1. So let's have a look and see if we can figure out some coordinates. I've got here 0, 2. So this is going to be 0, 2. So what I'm going to say is that is x1 and y1. And then over here, I've got 4 
0 and I'm going to say that's x2 and y2 now it doesn't really matter which coordinates you choose I just thought they were easier because they're crossing the axes and I, therefore I've got an easier calculation because I can just put the numbers directly in so y2 is going to be 0 and then minus y1 which is going to be 2 and that's going to be divided by x2 which is going to be 4 minus x1 which is going to be 0 okay so what we end up with is going to be minus 2 divided by 4 which is going to be in its simplest form minus a half which is actually the answer to that particular question okay hopefully that's all right for you let's move on to question number five I'm going to work through all of this particular worksheet on this video okay so if we have a look at this the key issue with this is that the triangles are mathematically similar so in other words all of the sides of the triangles have the same scale factor which is five times 4.5 is going to give us 22.5 therefore if I want to find out the value of x it's going to be 13 times 4.5 and that's going to equal 58.5 therefore x equals 58.5 centimeters and for two marks that would be the answer to that question Okay, let's move on then to question number six. Shruti buys a house for 192,000. Then she sells it after three years for 215. What's her percentage profit? So percentage profit is going to be percentage change is equal to the difference, which is the difference in the two prices, divided by the original. And because it's a percentage, we need to multiply by 100. Okay, so the difference between 215,000 and 192,000 is 23,000. The original price was 192,000. Put that in a calculator, multiply by 100, and that's going to give us to two decimal places 11.98%. And that would be the answer to question number six. Okay, so we're moving at a fairly fast pace through these. If you're not sure about anything, always leave a message below and I'll be able to put you towards a playlist with a few more examples. Okay, so a map is a scale of that. Distance between two points on the map is eight centimeters. Now be very careful about these sorts of things because basically if we've got one scale of 40,000 it means in centimeters if we multiply 40,000 by 8 what we actually get is 320 thousand centimeters now they are asking for the answer in kilometers okay so let's do this a bit of a time if I divide through by a hundred I get three thousand two hundred meters and then there are a thousand meters in a kilometer so now I need to divide through by a thousand and therefore the answer to this particular question will be three point two kilometers okay hopefully that was all right for you very very common questions those types of questions okay final two questions on this particular worksheet let's have a look at that one well it's a right angle triangle so in order to calculate this we're going to use the so ka toa ratios or at least we're going to use one of them and what I would do is I would always label it up that opposite X is going to be this line here the longest side on the right angle triangle is the hypotenuse and then the one that's left is the adjacent okay so what I've got then is I know the opposite and I know the hypotenuse therefore I'm going to use the sine ratio and I'm going to say the sine of X is equal to the opposite which is 5.4 divided by the hypotenuse which is 7.8 okay now I'm not particularly interested in the sine what I'm interested in is the actual angle so therefore I would use my calculator and use the shift sine key and you'll see that I get sine to the power of negative one it's the inverse trigonometric function okay and then if I just simply type in answer which is the answer to 5.4 divided by 7.8 to three significant figures I get 43.8 
degrees and that's the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's move on then to the final question on the worksheet, which is question number nine. It should be really 10. Okay, but it will give you 24 marks overall for this particular paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out the brackets. And what I get is going to be 18x minus 9 equals 20x minus 16. Now the problem here is that I want to get my x's on one side and my values on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 18x away from both sides. Now if I do that it means I get a positive value of x which happens to be 2x I still have to deal with the minus 9 and the minus 16 but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 16 to both sides because if I do that I lose this 16 and I get 2x which is great and then I get minus 9 plus 16 is going to be 7 okay so I've got now two values of x if I divide both sides by 2 what I end up with is x equals 7 divided by 2, which is going to be 3.5. And that's the answer to the final question, that x equals 3.5. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you. Please do subscribe to the channel, add a comment if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you inside the next video.